Traditional African American art is a term used to describe one of the most popular and well studied forms of African art today. It is art from the continent of Africa which has not yet been influenced by Western culture. The word traditional can be very misleading, causing people to believe that these are art forms that are very old and not practiced anymore. But contrary to this assumption, traditional African art is a style which is still actively being practiced in African communities today. One of the main things to focus on when discussing traditional African art is the fact that every piece of art, traditional or not, takes on a new identity depending on where it is being viewed and who is actually viewing it. The artist plays a major role in how the art is interpreted. In European countries and here in the West, we look at these art forms such as tribal masks and various sculptures in a different context than the people of Africa. One example of a group of people who practice traditional African art are the Dogon. The Dogon live in the western part of Africa in the country of Mali. The Dogon are best known for their religious traits, their masks, mass dance, wooden sculptures, and their architecture. Here in the West, we are fascinated by the Dogon sculptures and their beauty, although to them, they are nothing about beauty, but more about the meaning surrounding the sculpture and how it pertains to their religious values, ideals, and freedoms. These sculptures are kept hidden within the home or in the home of the Hogan, who, as we have learned throughout the semester, served as the spiritual leader of the Dogon. These forms of art are not to be seen by the public. The Dogon have constantly created beautiful wood sculptures, and their sculptures are considered to be the longest surviving wood sculptures of the world. They are wood sculptures which have dated back over 1500 years. Most of the sculptures have spiritual meaning, which we in the West have been unable to determine. The ritual use of masks in the Dogon society helps us to illustrate the importance of the spiritual role. Masks are created by blacksmiths whose jobs have been passed down generation by generation. The masks are typically used by the Awa, who were a powerful ritual society within the Dogon community, who were comprised of circumcised men. The Awa society is responsible for initially three public rites. These rites included the Dhamma ceremony, a ceremony which is said to help the dead cross into the spirit world, a post-funeral, and the Sigui, which was the largest known ritual ceremony throughout the Dogon society and occurred every 65 years to celebrate the replacement of an older generation with a newer one. Traditionally, paint, dyes, wood, fibers, and other materials which come from a bush which was seen as a separate realm from the actual village which the Dogons lived were used to build their masks. Because this bush was considered another realm, when the Dogon entered it in order to obtain their mask, they were thought to undergo a symbolic death while in the bush and return as mass supernaturals. Once the ceremony is complete, the masks are stored back away in the bush and the Awa dancers return to the village as they were before the symbolic death. Dogon masks were classified into different categories and all had various meanings in relation to Dogon history, mythology, and the level of social organization. An example would be the Walu. This mask, as you may know it as the antelope mask, represents an animal which the Dogons hunted in real life, but its alternative meaning related to the mythological antelope and her role in Dogon mythology. Colonial art. Another type of art we spoke about in class this semester is colonial art. During the era of colonial art, many things were happening in Africa which caused artists to struggle to define a cultural identity in the art crafted. Africa was becoming a melting pot of culture due to the fact that many mo modern European countries began to colonize Africa. Colonization began to diminish the meanings behind African art and instead gave them monetary value. Art was now being created as an item for sale and not for religious purposes. 
Globalization caused African art to influence many Western artists during this time, such as Picasso. African art was said to have an aesthetic value and inspired new works of art in the West. One of the greatest things taken from African art was this new approach of balancing realism and bizarre images while ignoring reasonable proportions like the original Western art contained. Postcolonial art. Postcolonial art is no longer seen as the art of African artists. It now includes art produced by artists of European, Arab, and Asian descent, amongst others. African art had now been very much influenced by the West. We see this in the film we watched in class where the dead Africans were now being buried in artistically sculpted coffins. So what makes African art African? I would have to say in order for African art to truly be considered African, it would have to be made in Africa and not an item for profit, but as an item used to serve a purpose in that culture, such as a religious statue, or a mask, or a tribal dance. There will always be cultural diffusion in the world, which molds the meanings of things, such as the Western influence on African art, but I don't believe you can truly call the newly made object African art when they do not hold the same meaning which they once did.